Hello everyone and welcome back to another video in our Power BI series. So in the last video we showed you how to download the Power BI application and a very brief introduction in getting started and pulling in your first piece of data. And this is exactly where we pick off in this video. So you can see we've got our simple piece of data here. So we've got the employee ID, employee name, but this is only one table out of three available to us in our Excel file. And again, links to that file is in the description to this video or any, any data that we refer to in this video, you can find the link in the description so you can obviously create it and follow along at home. If you look in the actual Excel file, you can see there's actually um, three pieces of information or three tabs. So the first one is employees. So you can see simple two column uh, data set that you've already got into Power BI here. We then also got a sales tab. So you can see we've got an employee ID, the location that employee is based in, and the number of sales that they did on a particular date. So these are just the days in the last year, or we've actually got some future dates, so please just ignore that. It shouldn't be the case, but hopefully it just proves or works as an example of purpose. And then we've got other locations table as well. So what we want to do is we want to pull all three of these data sources into Power BI, and then we want to join them based on their relevant information. So at the moment, or how that would work, is you can see in our sales table, we've literally just got an employee ID and then location ID and then some sales data. What we want to do is join the sales, this influence sales data to the employee's data so we can actually have the employee name rather than ID here. And likewise for location, rather than having a location ID, we would like to display the, the city name. So hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do is pull that into Power BI and show you how to join um, based on those IDs. So we're basically starting to create uh, a relative uh, database in our Power BI. So just move that Excel to the side. So what we need to do is just repeat the steps we looked at in our last video and go into Get Data and just go into Excel. Actually, what you can do is you can just click this Excel button here, what I believe I did in the last video, uh, but just to make it more simple because it just follow or flows, Get Data, Excel, and then obviously it's opened up for me at the actual path where that file is stored. I just now click company sales once again and go open. And then once it thinks about it, it will then open up our navigator. So we've already got the employees information, so we don't need to click that. But we're going to just click both the locations. So you can see that looks very much the same as what we just brought up in the sheet. And we're also going to open up sales as well. So let's click that. So you can see this is a uh, this is probably my fault. Something's gone wrong here for me. Uh, again, similar problem with employees, it's not picking up the first, the actual headers, it's picking up column numbers. Um, but you can see for sales, it has actually done it correctly for us. So obviously something I'm doing wrong here, but we'll just need to go into location, just amend that or transform that data like we did with the um, employees one as well. And you can see we've got a transform data button here, so you can do that as you're going or installing the data. But I'm just going to load both of these and then do that transformation after. So just click load. And just let it think about it for a bit as it's putting the information in, so it's processing queries. And then once it's finished processing, what you're about to see is we'll have another two tables available to us on this right-hand navigation side. So there we go, we can see that if we now expand locations, we can see the locations fields, and if we expand sales, we can expand the sales fields. And really interesting as well, because we haven't put this to this yet, for date, you can see it's identified as a date value in there. So if we go into this drop-down, you can see that we've got a date whole hierarchy available to us. So if we didn't want to just use that particular date, so the actual day, uh, date, that makes sense, uh, we can actually pull out just the year, the quarter or month applicable to that date. So that would become beneficial to us down the line when we're working with charts, or we want to summarize the, the data in a different manner to what it's pulled into. So again, this gives us more flexibility than potentially when we're working with data in Excel. So let's just, um, let's just uh, collapse all of those. So I'm just going to go into locations and just sort out these column headers once again. So we'll go into home and we'll go transform data. And you can see it's opened up on this page. And uh, we just need to make sure we navigate to the correct table. So it was location. So I've got location selected here. And you can see this is the issue. Just use first row as headers. Click that button. It does that transformation for us. Close and apply. And then that will be now uh, forced into place for future uh, iterations where we refresh the data and pull the new information in as well. So we can see that looks better. So we're again, employee done all the employee fields here, all the location fields, and the same for sales as well. So 
on this left hand side, and I appreciate I'm jumping around, but I want to try and touch on these things as they become relevant. So the first option we have on the left here is the report. So the report tab is what we have here. It's our dashboard page where we can bring in various pieces of information, whether it's tables or graphs, and summarize them on the page. If we go into the second one, you can see this is actually the data. So this allows us to have a very similar view where we've got the navigation on the right hand side. But it allows us to have a better look at each um, data set. And you can see sales have got a bit more in it for us to look at, so that we can either do things like uh, reformatting the data, or alternatively, we have the ability to add calculated fields to each data set. So if you wanted to have something on the lines of, uh, let's say, total sales, divided by the number of units sold to achieve those sales, we could do a average or a division sum here, in a new column, and this is the, the, the screen from which we would do it. We won't be touching on that in this video, but again, this is another one we'll be touching on later in the series. The last one we have available to us is the model. So if we go into model, you can see that these are all the tables in the fields available to us in our, base, our data model, what is Power BI. And because we've used good uh, structure, and our employee ID is the same as our employee ID in sales. Um, so let me rephrase that. So employee ID is obviously the employee ID. If we were to call this uh, in ID in employees, but over here we call it ID, obviously it wouldn't be able to make the automatic uh, connections that it's already done for us. Therefore, we need to click and drag to do that um, manually. So as we've done good structure, as we put it in here, auto, Power BI will automatically find the connections for us. If, however, let's just delete this one, so delete, delete that relationship. If we needed to do this manually, or whether it, um, either the, the names were different, but obviously I would uh, encourage you to make sure that naming conventions are maintained the same across tables. But if we needed to do this whatever manually, all you need to do is go to our employee ID, click and drag, and then hover over employee ID in the sales table, and you'll see it will make that connection for you. So that's how you can get around it if it hasn't already done it for you. So that is the model. So the model is really useful, let's say, as we get more and more tables into our Power BI, it allows us to visualize all these different connections between the tables available to us. But this is the basic structure of our, uh, power, our data as we go. So we've got our sales, everything basically result revolves around the sales table. So this is where it allows us to connect, obviously, to find the employee name based on the ID, and also find the location or the city name, again, based on the location ID. So let's just go back into our uh, dashboard. So we now know the data is connected by that model sheet. So if we now wanted to pull in additional information here, let's just make this table a bit bigger. All you, what you need to do, again, if you're not already selecting that table, you'll see nothing is allowed. You're not really able to do much. It just wants you to put a new visualization. But to update an existing visualization or table, just click on that table and you'll see you then have all the variables available, or variables, all the fields available to edit or add more to it. So what I want to do now is just bring into the city. So let's go drag city or city. Um, you, don't, you could bring city or location ID in if you wish as well. Um, so then let's just put them all in. And then likewise for sales, let's just bring in the, again, the employee ID, location ID, and let's go total sales and total units. And the only reason I've done that is just so you can see that the employee ID in both the, um, the, lo not the location, the sales and the employees is the same. So we know the data is all joined. And because that is, we don't need all that on there. So we can get rid of both the employee IDs. We can get rid of both the location IDs. And there we go. We have our complete data set available to us. So we've joined three pieces or three data tables together what has enabled us to summarize our data overall so we can now see the individual, the city they reside in, the total number of sales that they've done, and then the total unit of sales as well. So I think that'll do for this video. So you're now able to obviously install Power BI and you're able to also bring in three pieces of data or three data tables and have them join in Power BI as well. Uh, obviously, if you want to use the data we're looking at here, you can get that um, in the links in the description below this video. Or if you want to use your own data, obviously you're not limited to just three tables. You can do this with a lot more than just the three tables. But I wanted to start with a smaller data set just so everyone got the um, idea of how it worked. So if you enjoyed that video, please do give the video a like. Also, if this is your first time finding our channel and seeing our videos, 
please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all of our future videos. Uh, like I say, we're currently looking at Power BI in this series, but we've also done videos on Excel and VBA. So if you haven't seen those or you would like to learn more about either one of those topics, make sure again you check out the channel and those playlists available. And like I say, you can learn some more information about those as well. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.